Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 1. Interesting book. The Revelation of Jesus Christ. We can't even get into the first five words of this book. Because if your Bible says the Revelation of St. John Divine, that's not correct. Somebody didn't read the chapter 1, verse 1. Now let me tell you something. If you got a Bible, it's got no. The Bible's inspired. The chapters, the verses, and the chapter headings are not. So if you've got a chapter and it says a note, that note may be wrong. And a lot of your Bibles, when it comes to the second advent and Jesus Christ and the church and all that, a lot of those notes like Joel chapter 2 are wrong. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, this is the name of the book. It is of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him. God said, Son, here's something I want you to have. Show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. Alright, Son, here, here's his revelation. It is for your church, your servants, don't go be naming, dating the rapture and the advance and everything like that if you're not a servant of Jesus Christ. Shortly come to pass, this says it's 96 AD. It's almost 2,000 years. A day with the Lord is 1,000 years and 1,000 years is one day. God is not in a hurry, folks. Imagine God short. And it's been about almost 2,000 years. Shows what God thinks about his time frame and ours. He sent and signified to make known the method it by his angel, Jesus' angel, unto his servant John. So it came from Jesus Christ of the Father, given to John by an angel. This is how we get the account of Revelation. Who bear record of the Word of God. There's the Word of God. Look how quick that shows up. Well, what about the woman who will read your palms at, at the booth there? Is it according to the Word of God? So, what is the book of Revelation? It's according to the Word of God. There it is. And all things that he saw. Pay attention to the to the key word, one of the key words, the many key words in this Bible, in the book of Revelation 7. And John saw, seen, seen. See, seen. What John is going to write to us is an eyewitness testimony. Blessed, happy is he that readeth, readeth, readeth. Read it. Oh, I watched the movie on the Revelation. That's not reading. Read it. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And Paul said, well, uh, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
So it's perfectly proper to put a CD or cassette tape or MP3 player in your ear with the Word of God being played out in your ear. That's proper. But television, movies, I don't see everywhere it says to see the Word of God. To hear it. If you put it in your ear, look how close it is to your heart. Look how close it is to your mind, your brain. The words of this prophecy, the book of Revelation, is a prophetical book. If it hasn't happened, it will happen. Of God, given to Jesus Christ. God a liar? Three plates said no. He's unable, cannot, will not. This is going to be an interesting book. And keep those things which are written therein. Keep them. You memorize them. You know them. You hang on to them. You grasp them. You love them. For the time is at hand. Come on, Lord. 2,000 years? <laughs> Come on, John. It's been 2,000 years. And what did I got to say to that? Well, you know, we just read one of the prophets. Here, which one it was? Peter or John that in the last days there would be scoffers and say, He delays his coming. No, God just is very patient. His calendar, this shows that his calendar is not our Roman Catholic calendar. So if you're going to date God by a Roman Catholic calendar, you're already wrong. So, All right, now John. Now John's speaking. Now John. Here comes John. Three verses told it was God, the angel, Jesus Christ. Now John. To the seven churches, the first seven in the, in the book of Revelation, seven churches, which are in Asia. Now that part of Europe that goes down to Turkey and all that, that was part of Asia back then too. So you don't think, you know, it's way over there in China. I don't know why. I, I, I looked at some things and, I, and the things I saw, they don't even know why it was part of Asia. But, because you're going to see these churches, look on the map, wait a minute, that's Europe. Yeah, that was part of Asia too. Grace, well there's grace again. That's what Paul kept writing his letters. Grace to you, mercy. Grace be unto you, the one that readeth, the one that heareth, the one that keepeth this book. And peace from him, Jesus, which is present, which was past, and which is to come future. That's the first pathetical thing in the book of Revelation. Jesus is coming. Now, you want an interesting study? If you... If, if you want to mark your Bible with one word, mark the word come, cometh, coming, and there's another one I can't say, cometh, cometh, C-O-M-E-S-T. Mark that word come as a root word, and notice how many references it is to personally to Jesus Christ, and his ministry, and the second advent. Come is a very interesting word in your Bible. And from the seven spirits, what are they? I don't know. Which are before his throne. Those seven spirits are before the throne of God. What are they? We'll see them when we get there, but they're spirits, so I don't know if we're going to see them. And from Jesus Christ. So the first part is God. Verse 4, and from Jesus Christ, the author of this book. There's the author of Revelation. So when they say it was written by the Apostle John, and they say 1-1, one, one, I don't know where they got John in 1-1. One, one. It was given to John. And John added to it what he saw. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. Well, there we go. So here's the book of Revelation. How do we know it's true? Well, the one said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. You can never go wrong with Jesus Christ standing in court and being on your side. And you better have that faithful witness when it comes to being in court before God the judge and say, Father, he's under the blood. And the Father will never question Jesus. Really? Is he? Uh, as the Father, so is the Son, they cannot lie. And the first begotten of the dead. Now, yes, Jesus died. 
rose again. There were re resurrections in the Bible, but only Jesus Christ re remained alive. All everybody else who had a resurrection in the Bible, they died again. Jesus Christ resurrected, and he's never going to die again. And the prince of the kings of the earth. What does it say? Prince. It does not say king. Can we get that straight? Jesus is not king during the church age. He is never the king of the church. He's the king of the millennia under the, the with the Jewish people under his reign sitting on the throne of David. That's when he's king. Unto him that loved us, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Can we shoot the Jehovah Witnesses again? Can we go 66 books in the Bible and not shoot them? With the word of God? That God is Jesus and Jesus is God. There we go. Acts 20, 28. That, God, that blood was God's blood. Now watch this one. Ready? And has made us. Now who would this book be written to? Save people. John. It's this side of Calvary made us kings. I'm a king. I'm a, not yet, but I am. In the millennia, for those who do reign with Christ, that do not deny him and do not lose their rewards in the millennial reign, they will be kings. Now, when we come back on horseback behind Jesus, what is the title that he's wearing? King of Kings. We're kings, but Jesus is the king. He ain't the king over us. We're his bride. The bride has her spot by the king as queen, Esther. Unless you want a Solomite marriage in the Bible. And that's not so. So we are given to be kings, right? not right now. That's a future. Remember, this is a pathetic book. Kingship has not happened yet. And priest unto God and his father. I am a priest of God right now. And my office is an office of incense to prayers to God for people, for myself, for my family, for lost ones, going out in the ministries and doing things. Like John the Baptist's father, which I can never remember, was doing when the book of Luke opens up. You're just, you know what you're doing when, when you pray for somebody? You are doing the same thing that the priest did. They would go in and pray. That's your priestly. You just don't call yourself father. Now, come on. You really think that when you give that, that widow gives that guy 25 bucks or whatever they charge today to, to pray that guy out? You think they really pray? Really? But that's our office. I don't know if we're going to pray in the millennium. I don't know if people come up to me and say, can you pray? I guess there's Jesus Christ. So the priestly part may be done when the millennium when we become kings. Unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. That's not right now. Satan's ruling. Satan's in authority. He says that Jesus... If you fall down and worship me, I will give you this power. And Jesus never rebuked him. We have not had a born-again, Bible-believing president in the White House since the White House wasn't white before John Adams. I think that's when it came up. The White House. Abigail Adams doing the laundry in the living room, whatever it was. George Washington. I want to see a U.S. president come out before all and proclaim Jesus Christ is his Savior, then I will believe it. I don't want to hear under the grapevine, over the grapevine, through the bushes, in the confessional booth. I want to hear them out of their own lips proclaim. Then I'll say we had a Christian president. Behold, he cometh. Is that word come? What's it talking about? Well, hasn't Jesus already come as a baby? Well, must be another time. With clouds. Oh, that's the rapture. There we go. No. Every eye shall see him. That is not the rapture. 
Only those that are saved in Christ, dead and alive, that meet in the cloud, then we go to see Jesus. Nobody in the world, no one in the earth is going to see Jesus at that point. We will. Amen. Glory to God. That blessed hope. But this is talking about at the second advent. This is yet to come. So we've already started the second advent in Jesus Christ, beginning Revelation. He comes, it's going to be a cloudy day. I think his Amos said, Woe unto you the desire of the day of the Lord. Is not it darkness and not light? And they also which pierced him would be the Jews, the Romans. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And like the last verse in, in, in Revelation, even so, amen. Everyone's going to see him and they're going to wail and it's going to be, I don't want to see him. I am terror because there is God and that's not the one I believed on. That which pierced him. I mean, is that literal? The ones that 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 poked the the the, uh, the spear in his side and put the nails in him, or is it the group of people which would still say, if that's the case, who was the one that put the nails in the spear in his side? Rome, the Romans. So if that's the case, there the Romans are not disappearing until after the second advent in Jesus Christ. I am Alpha and Omega. Remember that. That's Jesus Christ. Revelation 22, 12, and 13. That is, okay, we're going to do a little Greek, okay? Let's get a little Greek. Here we go. Ready? Alpha is the, is the letter A, like our alphabet. It's the first letter. Omega is the very last letter of the alphabet, like our Z. God wants us, if he wants us to know a language, he will tell us. Now, he's given the ability right now for us to know Greek. Alpha and Omega. That's your Greek for today. Now we go back to English. Press one for English. The beginning and the end. So he tells us what that means. Saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Now I'm going to have fun with this. Because I love the Bible. I love Jesus Christ. I love God. So verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, from the seven spirits which are before his throne. That's God. Verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty God is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is God. You can't miss it. And when you ask somebody, is Jesus Christ God, and they tell you no, they have never, never studied their Bible. Or their Bible is completely perverted, and I'm not even going to look up those passages. I, John, who also am your brother, save people, and companion in tribulation, and this time they were being persecuted, they're being killed. We're going to see John's persecution. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Patience. Over 2,000 years. Isn't that patience? Can you imagine sitting at a red light for 30 days? And just sitting there waiting for that thing to turn green? Patience. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. And you can find it probably on any map. Why? Why? For the word of God what Christian actor has ever been put in jail because of his movie or because of his hymns or his CCM music hmm? Paul and Silas were put in jail for preaching for the word of God then they sang Paul I mean John has been remoted to this island to die he has been I, I, like I said forget I never check it out I lie when I say I'm going to, but one of these days I'm going to remember. Not, make it not a lie. But he was put into a boiling liquid. And he survived. As a result of that, they put him over here on this island and said, just 
you just go and die and stay away from us. We don't want that word of God and we don't want you. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the first day of the week, according to the book of Acts. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Check that one out through the Bible. The voice of the trumpet. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Who's that? Who's that voice of a trumpet? Jesus Christ. The first and the last. The Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. Verse 8. This is so good. This is so great. What thou seest, write in a book. He takes a look at something, and he, he takes his pencil, and he's writing firsthand. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. That's exactly how the epistles got out. They write it, and they would mail it off to, to the churches, and the churches would read it. You are told how the epistles got to the churches, got to the people, and got to us. Unto Ephesus, unto Samaria, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and that's not United States, Pennsylvania. I gotta admit, when I first read the book, I read it like, wow. I thought it was America, it's not. And unto the Laodicea. I and, wait a minute. and I to see the voice that spank with me. I turn to see the voice with me. I turn to see the voice. He wanted to see the voice. That sounded like a trumpet. And being turned, there's another seven. I saw seven golden candlesticks. Not a seven prong candlestick, seven golden candlesticks. This is getting kind of you couldn't make a movie. You could not make a movie in these first 12 verses. Never. And it's not a vision. It is not a dream. He's there and he's seven golden candlesticks. Okay. Next. In the midst of the seven candlesticks. I don't know. Three on one side. Three on the other. And one in the middle. One like unto the Son of Man. Now, who is that? That's Jesus Christ. As a human. The Son of God. Now, do you want a picture of present Jesus Christ according to John, the beloved disciple? Here we go. Ready? This is what Jesus looks like when John sees him approximately between 90 to 96 AD. What Jesus looks like. You ready? See if it looks like what you see on the pictures on Facebook or your Hollywood movies. Ready? Here we go. Clove the garment down to the foot. No nakedness. And girt about the paps, that's the breast, with a golden girdle. Golden girdle. So he's, he's got white clothing and he's got a golden girdle. His head, you ready? Well, the, uh, later on, we're going to see the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Is that what you've seen the pictures of Jesus? And his eyes. Or as a flame of fire. Anger. And we're going to see that in Revelation 19. He comes down in the second heaven. Eyes as a fire. He's not happy. And his feet like unto fine brass. A kind of brownish color. Well that would, that would match where it says in John 1. He came unto his own. He's not white. His hair is white. As they burnt in a furnace, and that's how you work brass. You burn it; in a furnace. it's been made pure. You burn it in a furnace to be pure. So 
His feet are pure. And yet the Bible says they still got the horns. And his voice has the sound of many waters. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever just sat by a lake, a stream, a river, just lay down and listen to that water flowing? That's what Jesus sounds like. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Another seven. Seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And what does your armor say about that sword? It's the word of God. He's still speaking the word of God. That sword, that two-edged sword is going to come out of him when he comes back in Revelation 19. And his countenance, his face expression, his face aurora was as the sun shineth in his strength. It is bright. I've never seen a picture of Jesus like that before. They put a halo around his head to be bright. That's not what it says. It says his face. It's shiny. When John, Peter, and, and James saw Jesus transformed on the mountain, he hadn't gone to Calvary yet. He had not come out of the, uh, the grave yet. Now here is Jesus fulfilled. He's, he's out of the tomb. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Here is Jesus purified and glorified. Many waters, sharp sword, and his comes was as the sun shineth in his strength. Oh, well, the light that shone on the ball was brighter than this noonday sun. So people who say they've seen Jesus today, you blow your light bulbs, give your eyeballs out. And when I saw him, now if you ever see Jesus, I fell at his feet as dead that would be your reaction to see if you were to pop up to Jesus right now you would fall that's why I say well, if we were to die and be absent from the body and present with the Lord you're not gonna walk up to Jesus high five hey brother Jesus what's going on no you're gonna hit the ground you're gonna see the feet and he and he laid his right hand upon me the one with the hole. Saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth, he's not dead, and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, I am never going to die. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So when you read Jonah tell his story about his death, you know that it wasn't just, you know, he popped in and out of, of consciousness. He said the bars were about him. He, he, uh, Jesus tells Peter that they're gates of hell, and here's the keys. When Jesus went down to hell after he died, he went and preached to the saints, I mean to the, to the souls down there, and he walked to the gate and the door and said, okay, these are mine, thank you very much. Walked across, across that gulf, met with Abraham in that repentant thief, and said, Hi, boys, you've been waiting for me? Let's go. And the Bible says that the, that the graves were open. Did you wonder if that dying thief went back to see that other thief? I wish you'd believe. Too late. Write the things which thou hast seen, and he had it. And the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. This is the plan of the book of Revelation. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand. So this is Jesus speaking. And the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Well, we already talked about the other night that Michael is the archangel over the nation of Israel. Matthew leads to, uh, th there's a possibility that there are angels over children. It's there. But 
over each church age, the seven churches of the church age period. There is an angel. There is an angel right now of Laodicea. Oh, he's sick and disgusted, but there's an angel. And the seven candlesticks which thou sowest are the seven churches. That's interesting because he's holding the stars, the angels. But he's not holding the church. And that concludes verse, I mean, chapter 1. We're going to get into great things. Great words. Watch the words when you read the Bible. They're very important. The Holy Spirit chose the words that he wanted. Words are deleted out of modern Bible. Important words are deleted out of modern Bible. 